So I'm going to show you the, the, the notion of the web seen as layers, which is a notion that I, my, the person I worked with, he's dead now, unfortunately, Franck Guitala in France, he was my teacher when I was younger, and we co-developed this version of, it's, it's a version of the web, it's a, it's a representation of the web that is inspired by network science and, and, and graph theory, but that's the most useful map of the web, if you want, uh, that I can share with you to get oriented in the web when you do stuff like Hive or manual browsing, right? And it's a weird map because it's not a map from above, it's a map from the side. And it looks like that. So basically, it relies on the idea that you have aggregates, and we could see that as communities. And so, I don't know, they might be fishing, cooking, quilting, I don't know, how many topics is uh, mankind interested in where people link together? So they make clusters, or aggregates, because these communities are more linked internally than they are linked with other communities. But the web is not just done of these packets. It also has a huge, huge, huge center, which is the surface of the web, where you have the most uh, known um, uh, websites like Wikipedia, Google, and I wouldn't even say websites of universities, national institutions, famous influencers on Instagram or whatever. All those are part of the surface of the web. It's not many websites, uh, but they are hugely linked. And now you also have <clears throat> what used to be called the deep web. I'm a little bit oversimplifying here, but basically a part of the web that is so deep that you can't I mean, the surface doesn't know about it. It's too specialized, it's too old, it's forgotten, but it's still online. It's people who want to hide. It's, I don't know, databases, databases for dentists that no one care about except the professionals, and hence you will not find them. And finally, just note that the, the aggregate layer is split in two because this structure from the most connected to the less connected is is represented inside itself. So in some way, each aggregate is also has, has also his high layer and his low layer, right? And I could even go further, right? Each aggregate is also has the, its sub aggregates with the core and the periphery. So if you want, this is the core of the web and this is the periphery. We, see, if we were from above, we, we could see that with the center periphery structure, but it's more useful to, to see that from the side so that we can have the different aggregates and there is, so what we want to do with Hive is remove the top layer to just focus on an aggregate. That's that when we are lucky when our community has enough uh, assortativity that we can find it as a nice cluster. It's not always the case, but when it is the case, it works well. Now, the bad news is that the core is cited by everyone. That's why that's why you have these huge blue arrows that come from even the, the deep web. They point to the, to the core. And it means that if you want to see the aggregates, you have to remove the core, the surface of the web. Because if you don't remove it, it everything looks connected because everyone is pointing to Wikipedia and stuff like that. So if we look at the connectivity, so the surface is super cited by everyone, and everyone is connected to everyone in the, in the surface, right? Now, in the, the aggregates is where not everyone is connected to everyone. It's where assortativity, homophily happens. It's where you link more to the ones who are like you. And the deep web is where the links are poorly connected, sometimes completely disconnected, right? And this also means something in search engines. So in search engines, the surface is the first results in Google and stuff like that, or for simple queries. That's what you will always find. That's why it's the surface, if you want. And the aggregates is the things that you will find if you have very specific queries, expert queries, for instance, or if you go beyond the first few pages of Google. And finally, the deep web will often contain resources that are not found in Google. And all the search engines together, they don't know all of the web, right? So some of the pages that are important to your analysis are not in Google and you have to find them manually. 
It's also a matter of notoriety. So the surface is known of many, many people. The aggregates are known of amateurs and experts, like people who have this affinity for a given topic. And the deep web is forgotten or wants to not be known and wants to be hidden. And finally, the contents, and this is the most important and not so intuitive property of these layers, is that the surface tends to be generic, while the, the aggregates are specific on a topic, but even inside a topic, you have generalities about the topic, and you have uh, more specialized contents that are even more specific, even given a single topic. And the deep web might be either super, super specific or even damaged so that we can't even sometimes find the topic of a web page. And of course, this is more of a continuum than it looks, right? So often you have to decide whether a super generic web entity belongs to the surface and then you will put it out of your corpus or belongs to the super to the very center of your corpus and then you will keep it. So for instance, the, if you study science in Denmark, in Danish, which is kind of narrow because Danish is a relatively small country with a specific language, so finding this corpus is fine. And let's say you do that because you want to see what are the most uh, influential or most represented parts of science in Denmark. And then you have the website of the Ministry of Science, or whatever it is actual name in Denmark. And yeah, well, yes, so you, you, you might want to keep it. If you keep it, it will be in the center of everything because every laboratory in the country will have a link to the ministry, maybe, or something like that. But maybe it, it brings nothing to your corpus because it's so central that it tells nothing about anything. So you may want to remove it. And this question is whether you, you, you assign that to the surface or to the core of your corpus. And there is no good answer to that. It really depends on what you want to do with your corpus and how you want to analyze it. So the only thing that is important to anticipate here is that this structure that comes from graph theory, and we could dig into that later, but I'm just going to stick to this vision for now, has a super strong impact on what happens when you start your corpus. And it has a good side and a bad side. The good side is that you don't need to start with the good uh, web entities. Right? If you miss the center of your target, you will be aspired to it. Right? Because the center of your target is, so the core of your aggregate, it's the most cited part of your aggregate by definition. So if you, f if you miss that, you will find it super quickly. So you cannot really miss the, the most important resources of your aggregate, of your community, of your domain. The bad news is that even stronger is the attraction to the surface layer. And this is inevitable, right? So the first resources you will always find are Wikipedia, YouTube, Google, Adobe, Microsoft, I don't know, all these super known super famous web entities that everyone points to for kind of random reasons. And you will have to eliminate these systematically so that you can find the rest, the one who are cited because they actually matter to your corpus. So there is always a moment where you discard, 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 discard many super famous web entities and only then you will find via the prospection process the best web entities. And this is the good moment. And then you have this diminishing return effect that will kick in and you will find less and less good content compared to a lot of noise. And this is because you are moving down from the core of the aggregate to the periphery of the aggregate and towards the deep web. Right? So that's when you find less and less relevant resources. And that's how most of the uh, corpus harvesting uh, uh, processes unfold in practice.